It's a really neat boat. I think you're gonna be surprised. This is really fun being on this boat. That gets exciting. This is a, a fun boat. That's a plus. That's pretty nice. Pretty cool, huh? Hi there, this is Captain Koo and my old sailing buddy, Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Randy. Hey, Captain. Are you out here somewhere? What are you doing? Just what are you look, doing? Just looking at some starfish. Starfish? Oh, I love starfish. You know, I saw starfish in the Bahamas one time. We sailed off into the Bahamas, and the water was so clear, you could count the bumps on the back of the starfish. Listen, today I've brought you to South Portland, uh, to Aspasia Boatyard, uh, and we're going to look at another progeny. Okay. You want to know what the progeny is of? I sure do. Cal 40. Ooh. That's kind of a hallmark boat. And it, it is. It's one of our earlier progenies, and, and, and certainly for the new modern age of, of fiberglass sailboat manufacturing. Uh, she was designed and built in 1963, promptly went out and won the Bermuda race, the Transpac race a number of times, and a whole host of other races around the country in the Great Lakes. Uh, it was really an amazing design. When the builders come out with an award winner like that, they've got a good concept, it'll work, they just make them a little smaller. In this case, they came up with a Cal 230 in 1968, and uh, at the same year, they also came up with a Cal 29, so they were kind of competing boats in their line. But the Cal 230 I first knew was a boat raced by two brothers down in the Chesapeake, and uh, I think she was in a little class above the 25-footer I was racing at the time. But it was fun to see her go by. She was fast. They did very well with her. One of the first questions that ever came to somebody selling boats back then or at, at, at boat shows, people would step on board and they'd say, how many does she sleep? <laughs> and you could put six people on this boat if you wanted to. Uh, so it's kind of a neat boat. This particular boat uh, had a little rough times going and they're gonna have to replace a few things. As you'll see, the owners have been pretty realistic about pricing the boat, and uh, I think you're gonna find taking a look at this interesting. Wanna go take a look? Yeah. Okay, let's go take a look at that right now. There she is, Cal 230 from 1969. You can recognize the cows right off because the keel is just Cal 40 all over again. Oh yeah. Now. The rudder looks a little squirrely right now because when they put the boat away, uh, they put up a chain which prevented the rudder from being turned around. So that needs to be fixed. Now Lapworth got rid of all this boat up in here that they used to build. Used to come down in here, way down in here, down to the front of that keel. Then it came back up and then up to here somewhere, maybe about here, and then they had a rudder stuck on that. All that's gone. All that's gone, and all that is drag. They extended out the water line a little bit on this and gave it what we call a reverse transom. Why is it reverse? Because it's not like this. They had to get the backstay back beyond the end of the boom. They put this little piece bound back here. On this boat, you see it has two handles on the turnbuckle here. Yeah, they the flip down. Okay. Yeah, they flip yeah. down. Those flip up, and then you can hand adjust that turnbuckle to get pressure on your backstay. Here's a really terrible <laughs> cotter pin installation. Cotter pins are very important. Uh, they were the reason for the loss of a mass that I know of going to Bermuda. On the Nevins? On the Nevins, yes. And so uh, this should be addressed. It could be cut off. It should be just, you put a cotter key through most of the clevis pins and then you just barely spread the end of the cotter pin. So it's just like this. And then maybe wrap a little tape around it? And I would wrap a little tape around it, exactly, yep. Just so that if a sail or anything uh, made out of cloth gets close to it, it's not gonna try and catch on that. She has it, the typical uh, shear line stripe of Cal, that bronze stripe, because these were considered high-sided boats back in the day. So by adding that stripe, it fools the eye thinking the boat is just a little bit, you know, more graceful. Oh, that's actually a nice feeling bottom. Oh, you're going the right way for a smack bottom, and I don't care who knows it. Oh. Uh, that's pretty nice. There's a couple little places here. There's, a, there's an extra stuff that needs to be dealt with, but I wouldn't. That's not too bad. It no, like not one, bad at one all. One layer, really. This gel coat 
needs to be waxed and, and, and polished, but I wouldn't bother painting the boat. We've got the zinc to end all zincs. Well, it's a good size zinc, and it's also a grounding plate for their electrical unit, too. This is strictly here for uh, lightning arresting from the shrouds should all be down hooked onto the other side of this bolt. When you see the really big ones that are about this big, yep. those are designed for single side bend. A nice sailing boat, she's, she's good and heavy, she weighs 10,000 pounds and about uh, uh, 4,500 pounds in lead down here. Through holes look pretty uh, minimal and flush. Yeah, well you've got, uh, you've got a, a head on this side. This guy's probably gonna be your intake and probably your exit here maybe. Uh, and then I think on the other side there's a sink drain on the other side we can walk around if you like. She has cut away a fair amount and she still has some roundness to her bilges down there but not not the old school roundness. This is this is venturing up into you know surfing territory. So somehow somewhere between a musher and a surfer? Yeah, yes. We would call that a murfer. Oh yeah. Look at that speedometer. We love to see those spin. And here is the depth sounder right beside it. It's not painted. That's good. This is the sink drain for the uh, head. Uh, so you can brush your teeth and all come out there. This is your engine intake. And you know what? It's nice and clean. It's nice and clear. Uh, this has an old Atomic 4 on it, uh, gas engine. And that's all they put on them back in those days. Here's an interesting prop. First, I thought it was the tips were bent. But this is, this is some sort of speed prop. When you see a bend like that, yeah. you're sure he's hit a rock. But usually when you hit a rock, it'll hit, bend one, one blade. He did it consistently, I guess. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'd like to know more about that. Needs a new zinc, of course. That cutlass bearing may be okay. What do you say? Want to take a look at another 50-year-old boat here? Yeah, let's hit the steps. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people, and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing, so you know, every little bit helps. Thanks again. Oh, Randy. Yeah. Well, come on up here. This is a trip back in time for me. Thanks. Back in 1970 to 73 or so, I was working with a dealer for cow boats on the Chesapeake Bay, a man named Arnold Gay. And back in those days, Fiberglass boats are just coming into the fore, so they're all over the place. And it was kind of neat because in our boatyard, we would actually have a lineup of like a 21, a 22, a 25, a 30, maybe a 36. It was really kind of fun, and it was really fun to see. I don't think there's any more dealerships like that anymore. Coffee's for closers only. <laughs> and this Cal product and all the boats from Bangor Punta were put together very well. They were built in California. And uh, they didn't have the technology we did today, so as we've said, the hulls tend to be resin rich, which means that they just put more resin on than cloth. Notice too, reminds us a little bit of the Cal 28 on Captain oh, yeah. Q. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, Cal 28. Long cockpit. We didn't have, we don't have the bridge deck they had on that one, but long cockpit and a uh, uh, very similar keel configuration, and uh, about the same period. They didn't sell many of those on this coast, mostly on the west coast, I think. Uh, but this was, this was popular here, and they built about 200 of these. Now, notice I'm sitting here in this cockpit, which we talk about cockpits a lot. And I can just move the sea dog a little bit. Look how high this is. It's catching me right, right, right next to my wings. And there is a, a, a deep winch handle locker here. And sometimes they just put little shallow things in here. But this is... This is really good size. They really thought these boats out. We know she's probably going to have a quarter berth maybe, huh? Oh yeah. And here's a little semi. Uh, it's got enough, enough bumpers and fenders in there. There are two pumps here, two lines coming up. I'm not certain which. This looks like a, um, a, a bilge pump. And the other one, I don't know. I don't know what the, why there's two there. And that would pump out to the scupper? Just pump right out here to the cockpit. And this cockpit is slanted aft, so everything's going to drain down. Hatchboards were uh, originally fiberglass. I think that might be a remake right there. But this was one concept they had that allowed her to breathe. Now, on this side, nice line locker. Uh, and there's some canvas down here. This is part of... I think this might be part of an awning, and I've seen the rest of it in the quarter berth itself. Notice the little drains here, the scuppers. These are very deep. 
So anytime you get water splashing into the cockpit up here, it's going to come back drain here and then run down this long chute, boom, out into the cockpit. We have a set of variant winches, number 22s on each side, which are plenty big for this boat, single speed. And then for your spinnaker, you would have a set of 16s back here. Uh, this boat carried a spinnaker. They sailed with them a lot in the racing that went on down there. And back here, you can see a set of two turning blocks. And one would be for would be a lead to your your uh, probably your number 22 up here, and the other one would be a lead for your spinnaker sheet and guy up to the 16. Nice one-inch stainless steel track on the side here, not terribly long, uh, but adequate. Stanchions are all bolted down, and they have backup plates behind them inside the cabin. You're going to be steering the boat a lot of time right up here. Uh, the the tiller is right behind you, uh, and it's unfortunately jammed with the rudder on part of the uh, uh, stanchions below holding the boat up. But here's our compass, and this compass heading us to, to uh, what is that, 205. And uh, it's repeated down here, it's kind of clever because you can look at it straight forward, or you can see it down here repeated here. And then this line, this lubber line as it's called, which is the line that you want to aim the boat at, uh, also is used to indicate the heel of the boat. See, right now it's showing that we're actually healed over about five degrees. Might have to question that. Here's another level gauge right here, which says we're, we're, we're actually even. Now, I might we want to calibrate that. I was going to say, when do they put this on? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a new Raymarine. There is a new Raymarine GPS over on this side. I can't turn it on right now. The cover should be on that, but it's not. Uh, and here we have a little 12 volt. Uh, Oh, he's got, oh, it's, oh, look at that. USB, wow. USB. Usually, on yep. these boats, you would find the old cigarette lighter there. That's early days for this is, 1969 USB. Yes. That, that, <laughs> that may be a collector's item there. Nice cover here on the engine controls. Everything's right there for you to see. Now, if you're sailing, you know, close to shore, on the Chesapeake, or whatever, we don't need a bridge deck. You know, if it's really going to, if it's really going to be a problem, you can take, you know, one of your washboards, and, and put it in here, slide it down, and you basically accomplish a, a, you know, the same height here. You'll keep the water out of the cabin. But you end up spending a lot of your time walking in and out of this cabin to get things, get coffee, get donuts, get whatever. And uh, so this just makes it very easy to egress and ingress. Ingress, egress? Gressing. Gressing Di is very easy. Digress? Digress, and I do digress. Uh, here we have a uh, fuel, yes, that's the fuel tank, and there's a, a tank sitting right underneath this cockpit. And my feet are right over the top of the Atomic 4. Uh, on the back, she's got a very simple, old, uh, undersized, I'd say, Schaefer Traveler system. Want to take a look forward? Yeah, let's go check it out. Really fun to be on these boats again and, and look at all this old gear from back then. Uh, we've got a variant, I don't know, probably a um, jib halyard winch and maybe a spinnaker winch down here. This is an old south coast, it takes a single handle, it goes right straight in there, straight through. On the other side, we have uh, another variant, probably for the main halyard. You know what these eyes are? Your close strut. reaching strut. Yeah. Your reaching strut will snap right into that and go straight over the side so that you can really go hard on the wind with a spinnaker set. Here we have a spinnaker track. Yay, spinnaker tracks. And the pin is a little tight right now. And she does have good old fashioned wire halyards here. You see this wire? Yep. That wire comes down to this, this shackle here. There you go. And the other end of that wire is right there. It's a, what they call a wire rope splice. You see that? Yep. So, uh, if you could look all the way to the top there, you would see uh, where the wire ends and the rope begins. So when you put the, the main halyard on, when you pull it down, all you have is two or three lines of wire and then a rope tail that'll cleat off here. These lifelines might be, have, might be yeah. a misnomer. Yeah, I think they would be a, a little tricky today. But you'll see a really large Danforth anchor that will hold you in just about any kind of uh, blow you're going to come up against with this boat. Uh, you're just going to have to feed that through the bow pulpit. There's no roller, huh? There is no roller, no. Also, you're looking down here at a two-tone deck. This was another option. You could have it all white or you could have your choice of color. This deck has, uh, uh, certainly looks good for 50 years of age. There's some, there's some cracks here 
that again our cosmetic I tell you that feels pretty solid now I'm gonna invite you below what do you think yeah I'd love to check it out Brenda, yeah. well come on down here the current owner bought this boat with an eye to doing a little cruising with his his uh, wife and I think they're planning a family and they need a bigger boat but he or somebody has attacked this boat already and they stripped all the varnish off of the bulkheads here everywhere and it would not take much to give it a light sanding again and uh, uh, maybe oil it but I think uh, let's varnish it yeah. it'd, be, it'd be pretty sharp with a not a gloss semi-gloss so. why semi-gloss on the interior oh i'm just thinking because it wouldn't be too shiny now we were just not recently but uh, maybe a week or two ago on a uh uh sns 36 footer right yeah the swan yep. the swan and lovely boat just beautifully done certainly you can't compare the two in some ways but in other ways look at the space we have here in this in this u-shaped dinette yeah it's a um, little, little bigger it's considerably bigger and this will become a big double berth Big galley, it's kind of similar to that one too, isn't it, along yeah. the cyber side? And you know, if you look down to your left and your right, or your right and your left in your case, what do we find? Quarter berth? Yep, quarter yeah. berth one and um. quarter berth two. The owner, I think at some point, has decided to paint the interior this light blue. It's not unpleasant, it's just uh, interesting. Big lights here, big, big uh, cabin windows, which historically could leak from time to time, but they weren't massive, they were, they were still pretty good. There's no center hatch, it's just the forward hatch, and right now we just closed that a few minutes ago uh, when we were up on deck. Uh, but right now there'd be a hurricane blowing through here, it's huge. Uh, so you get plenty of ventilation. Notice she has a molded floor pan down here, and that's how they, 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 they made them. There's a... Uh, and there's a curve to it too. There's right? a definite curve to it, uh, and, and this would be part of the structure of the boat to, to give it strength to the hull and then they built the furniture right on top of all that that grid that was created by this here is your compression post uh that we've seen in other boats and this comes down to underneath here why do we have a post ah we have a, a mast on deck there's a steel beam underneath this uh, this particular molded piece see all of the bulkheads here are are all tabbed to to the deck and so forth and those are all tight and chain plates look good Come on back to this next one here, the aft lower here on the starboard side. What would you look for with those? Well, you might see some rust dripping down or even just generally leaks. You can look through the window at it right here, where, where it goes through the deck. And that little plate there may need some rebedding underneath it. Notice the uh, cotter pin there, by the way. That one looks pretty bent. Yep. And no tape. And look on this side. Come up here. Look on the front side of that turnbuckle. Oh, that's a shin catcher. A lot of people ask us, What's it going to cost me to have this boat to do these things? And I was just looking uh, in my own library at home, and I have a couple uh, of, of these uh, set of publications. This is a 2018 Marine Buyer's Guide from Defender Industries. And it has everything you ever need to buy in a boat. So if you think you need a new traveler, well, here's one right here. What do you want to spend for? Could be $400, could be $210. So this is a Bible, and you can take this or get the one from Hamilton Marine here in Maine. And, of course, there's always the uh, big company, West, West Marine. Marine yeah. uh, they all put these out. They're free. Send away for them, and then take it home and study it. Now, we have a nice galley here, simple. All you needed if you were living on the Chesapeake, you, didn't need, you weren't going to bake anything. So a two-burner alcohol stove. This is the new variety that are non-pressurized, and they really burn really well. I cooked on uh, Mark's on his uh, uh, Allied Sea Wind. Big storage, and it's all dry. I'm not seeing any issues there. You see, no drips. Now, we're also noticing that we don't have pressure water. You pump it back like and forth like so, and that will you know, pump the water up out of the tank. Uh, we have an ice chest, just an ice chest underneath the captain's bag, but unfortunately, this latch has given way on us. So as a result, our freezing net's getting a little warm. Nice magazine rack along the side of the boat there. Okay, Randy, just moving after, we have no chart table on this boat, okay? It's, just, it's a 30-footer, you're gonna be on the Chesapeake Bay. There's land, there's land. So, you know, you do have to find the buoys, and if it gets foggy, you want a chart table. There it is right there. Just use your galley table. Uh, quarter burst. Um, We've got, these, are, these have been filled up with sails and gear, but 
you see they're nice and low and that's not without oh look at this we've got um, safety storage under there it all needs to be cleaned up this this boat really it would smile it would, it would be so happy if you could come down and just scrub it undoes the heck out of it right and right here we have a good antique VHF uh, about the same year and everything as the one we saw in that really nice Sparkman Stevens boat this panel is exhaustive I, I've never seen so many switches for such a small boat here's another quarter berth I, I sort of had in my own imagination consider this like a little mini cabin back here uh, but maybe you could do a little flip up table there for you could station. very easily put a chart table right here notice my headroom in here but as I turn around well I'm under the hatch yeah cheating it's it's a little snug uh, there's your engine room and if you were to come over here you see the master switch right here and here's your bilge pump switch and I don't know what these other switches are oh my gosh is it another? Oh, I thought I had another USB, but no, it's just, <laughs> it's just a three-prong spotlight. Uh, there's a little trap door here that will let you into a fuel tank, I believe. She's dirty, a little bit rusty, but I bet it runs. Any apprehension with you going with a gas engine? No, no. Four? I, I like, on both this size, I like a gas engine because you turn it on and you hardly hear it. Everything here needs uh, attention, needs some sanding. Somebody has done, spent a lot of time with this boat getting it prepped for additional work, haven't they? Can we see the bilges? Probably not. It may be screwed down. Is this screwed down? Yep, they're screwed yeah. down. We won't pull it up. But you can pull that up. And the bilges are very shallow because she's a shallow, relatively shallow bilge boat. Yep. So there's no great deep sump. Now, this is a little interesting because uh, somebody didn't measure quite correctly. So, ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> That, that hurt. On the port side, we have a hand pump sink, lots of drawers, and that's the hanging locker back there. Oh, that's pretty clever. We have a nice floor pan down here. There's no shower. Uh, it's not even set up for one. I'm not certain why they put this toilet in so badly, um, because... Does this door not close? Oh, the yeah, door won't close. You see, it bumps into it. Oh. Uh, and I think part of it is the piece on the top of that Jabsco yeah right there excuse my pointing with my toe yeah that's what's hitting it normally if you didn't have that on there with the other with the other version that wouldn't be out that far it'd be back in about two more inches yeah. well I'm in a pretty nice big uh, v-berth here I love these chain plates god they're just massive on this boat uh, now I should give this a little try you think I think so are we at that point in our life I oh. think so <laughs> now <laughs> you I know I'm only making this look hard. <laughs> it really isn't. You're I, acting, I know. I am acting. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm not even going to think about a pillow, but uh, this is okay. Giant hatch overhead. There are no, there, there are two opening ports, excuse me, uh, on either side. Uh, there, one in the head, one back. So you're going to have lots of ventilation. I can see where the uh, stanchions for the lifelines have been through bolted. And they've got great big washers on them. I guess it'd be nicer to have a big plate down there, but those will certainly keep them on, I think, most of the time. And I have to say, my back feels pretty good on these cushions right now, and I'm pretty comfortable. And I can get rid of you very easily. Oh, there this. you go. Okay, Randy, thanks a lot for coming by. Oh, hey, Randy. Hey. Well, here we are in South Portland, Maine, <laughs> and we just had some fun looking at a good old Cal 230 today. Uh, Bill Lapworth designed the boat uh, just after doing his Cal 40 that set records all over the world. This particular boat is old, and no question about it, she's tired, uh, but to me, I think I would take my $50 bucket of undoes it step on that boat with a garden hose and she'd be 85 percent ready to go i think there's a, a couple of little problems with the sails we didn't see them but they were reported by the owner who's held nothing back but when you're inside the boat it's a little slice of history it was early fiberglass molded hull molded deck the cow boats are strong they're all out there still sailing around someplace one of the best things about it is that the owner is pretty realistic he's asking five thousand dollars for this somewhere we have that this is a floater okay Okay. The owner's been using it for a couple of years. He's made one run from Boston up to, uh, uh, I think, uh, 
amount dessert. Ten because she floats. I'm going to give it five because it's a Lapworth design and you're going to have a hell of a lot of fun sailing it. And I'm going to give it another four for uh, some love you're going to put into it. And you're going to have a neat boat for at 19 here, right there. Nice. Cal, Cal 230, Lapworth design. It'll be a fun boat for somebody. If you want, if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button, and and that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here, yeah, or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes. A little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now, and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>